Brett Lee was absolutely on top of his game in the 2003 World Cup. The speeds he was hitting this World Cup were unreal, and he was second on the list of highest wicket takers in the World Cup. Number one was Chaminda Voss but, with 23, but then next on the list was Brett Lee with 22 at an average of about 18. And today we're going to watch the highlights of his all his wickets from the World Cup, and I promise you this is fast bowling at its best. I think nobody bowls, nobody has bowled better in a tournament in one day cricket. Fast bowlers particularly. Here we're starting in Australia's first game of the World Cup against Pakistan and he's only getting started here but already you'll see the speed on this delivery is up there 151.8 kph top edge gone running here and here against India that's just pace not really a great ball but it's quick 143 Brett Lee his spell was probably even quicker than that meaning like the other balls they just it just has the bat spin confused really <laughs> another one not really a not really a great ball but when you have pace it does funny things to the batsman here again Zimbabwe I already know this is gonna be a really amazing catch just a reaction catch again the speeds there were good 147.1 but he's not even actually in his groove yet later on in the World Cup he's just gonna be absolutely unreal can see here it's just a reaction catch so obviously while being a great bowler he's also just a great all-around athlete obviously that's gonna come with it if you're bowling 160 kilometers per hour which also since he was a good athlete it made him a good fielder as well here we are against Sri Lanka in the group game I think he's uh, hurt Jayasuriya here probably had to retire hurt I think <laughs> Another great catch off his bowling. 149.8 kilometers per hour. Seeing the replay. It's crazy how <laughs> the batsman didn't even get it near, even near the middle of the bat, but when you're bowling that quick, it's going to fly off even off the thick inside edge. Again, just pace, great ball up near ribs, shoulder height. Not much you can do as a batsman. This one, that's just, that's plum, LBW, 148.8 kph, doesn't even seem like the batsman's seen it really, and this one was swinging too, so it's just, when someone's bowling 150 kilometers per hour and swinging it, like, you just don't stand a chance, do you? This is him hitting a 6 against New Zealand, but in this game, with the ball, he's gonna go absolutely crazy, I think this was... This was where he got on a roll in the World Cup. I guess, well, the game before against Sri Lanka was also great. But over here, it's probably the peak against New Zealand. Shane Bond earlier in this match had bowled really well. But Bradley maybe did it better here. I think this is a Stephen Fleming caught behind. 149 kilometers per hour. It's going down leg a bit, but it's just too quick. Here, I've already seen this and I know what's going to happen. McCollum is going to get absolutely wrecked. <laughs> Yorker, right on the toe. 148.7 kilometers per hour. <laughs> I know that probably hurt too. McCollum, he's tough, so he probably doesn't want to show it, but I'm sure that hurt. Next ball, threw him. Again, doesn't seem like the ball did much, but 151 kilometers per hour doesn't have to do much when it's that quick you can just do them for pace you can see on the stump cam always love this angle I think a next stump cam is gonna be even better <laughs> that's like the McCollum ball except this one didn't hit the pad it just went through and bowled him 150.8 kilometers per hour I think we're gonna see a stump cam on this one we're gonna see it smashing into the stump yeah, here it is. There, right into the stump. <laughs> Poor stump. Then here, another, another acrobatic great catch to finish the match. Match was already more or less over, but finishing it in style. So I think when he started the spell, his first wicket was, it was like 105 for five, I think. So New Zealand were in a great, weren't in a great position, but the target was I think 209. So. It wasn't a terrible position either, but Brett Lee just completely 
finish the game completely like just left New Zealand no chance they thought they had a chance like 10 minutes ago and in 10 minutes it's all over <laughs> Australia won by 90, 96 runs that's why they were the best team didn't lose a World Cup game for 12 years here we are against Kenya that's a beauty great delivery again already the pace is already up which is already hard enough to play but then he gets swing and seam movement is just unplayable really was played on kind of off the elbow 148.3 kilometers per hour and I think this broke his arm I think it's hit, I think it's hit like the bottom of his like elbow yeah just like the bottom part of the arm here right below the elbow very nasty blow. Yeah, it's n exactly where the arm guard isn't protecting. So, while he was getting batsmen out as well, he was also injuring them. We saw J. Syria earlier in the video, earlier in the World Cup. Something about this dismissal is just super satisfying to watch. The pace is even higher, 153.5 kph. But just something about this is super satisfying. The way he edges it, the way it goes to slip, flies to slip, good catch. It's satisfying to watch. And now Lee's on a hat trick. Hat trick ball. Got him. <laughs> and Lee is off on his run. 155.5 kph. And it's a hat trick. It was a bit it was a bit odd here. It's like I feel like it's hit the back pad and hit the hit the stumps as well. So I made it look slower than it actually was because of that. I think is this the yeah this is the uh, now we're into the World Cup semi-final this is the semi-final of the World Cup dropped 156.5 kilometers per hour again it wasn't a great ball but it's just so quick even if it's not a good ball it's hard for the batsman to control it Boldham this one 160.1 kph <laughs> one of the quickest deliveries ever bowled right at off stump <laughs> good luck hitting that you can see the batsman tries for a expansive drive, seems in a bit, it's missed that by at least like three or four inches. It's just probably as hardly seen it, and it seemed in 160 kilometers per hour with it seeming in, no chance. And then he just gets on a roll, and that's a good delivery. And again, the target for Sri Lanka wasn't high either. I think it's 213, but Brett Lee. In this spell is just gonna basically take the game away from them completely like he did against New Zealand that was more the middle lower order this more the top order another one good ball good pace 149.7 kilometers per hour again Brett Lee causing havoc as he's been doing all World Cup seems away 150 kilometers per hour good catch by Ponting I think yeah, good catch by Ponting. <laughs> this is just amazing bowling by Brett Lee. Brett Lee, about to complete his Brett Lee steaming in. Another drop. And another not really good ball, but it's quick. <laughs> now we're into the final. It's out on a no ball. 150.6. Buckner calls no ball. You could actually hear it right when he had bowled it. But the fielder didn't know though. Everybody else new not sure who the batsman is uh it looks like sehwag it's not it's not tendulkar i think tendulkar was the first one to go but it's okay because as you all know australia won the world cup anyways brett lee gets another wicket 153.6 kilometers per hour i think it's ganguly just <laughs> made him look like a fool that was a terrible shot but again it's just the pace here we are with brett lee's last wicket of this world cup Yorker right on stumps. Game is more or less done at this point. 143.2 kilometers per hour, which by Lee standards in this World Cup is actually kind of low. <laughs> Sounds absurd to say. But yeah, that's his 22nd wicket. Final one of the World Cup, I think. It's McGraw who takes the last wicket, and Australia won the World Cup. And I think Brett Lee played a much bigger part in winning the World Cup than any of the other bowlers. While I think McGraw had one less wicket. Seven of them came against Namibia, which is a bit, eh, you know, not necessarily the greatest team. Whereas Brett Lee was on fire the whole tournament. Like I said, unreal speeds. The pitches in South Africa really 
supported his his style of bowling, the super quick bowling. And as I'll probably make a video, a lot of other bowlers, fast bowlers in, in particular, bowled really well and really fast in this World Cup because the pitches uh, entice that. And yeah, Brett Lee was probably the best bowler of the tournament, even though Chumin Devas was technically the leading weight taker when it comes to impact and all, honestly just entertainment value. Just seeing someone bowling 150 clicks is amazing. And yeah, like I've said already, Brett Lee was one of the biggest reasons for Australia winning this World Cup, not only winning it, winning it unbeaten. And his performance should be remembered for years to come, and it is, and it will be. Anyways, that was uh, today's video. Thanks for watching. Bye.